I'd like to begin by thanking the Red Helmet Training Center for hosting the event. Today's lecture objectives are the health challenges facing first responders, our solution, who is Dr. David E. Root, case studies, how I fit in, and the Niacin Flush Sauna Detox, a much more simpler version of our major program which you're about to learn about. In today's world, we're being bombarded by toxins, and currently there's over 100,000 chemicals that are being used in industry, and over 4,000 are being added each year. Now, out of those, only 10% have been tested for human safety, and out of that, only 1% in combinations. In the state of California, we have Prop 65, which has over 900 chemicals known to cause cancer, birth defects, and other reproductive harm. In the case of first responders and firefighters, these are the additional chemicals that you're facing. Cancer statistics for firefighters include a 9% increased risk of being diagnosed with cancer and a 14% increased risk of dying from cancer compared to the general U.S. population. Respiratory issues in first responders after the 9-11 World Trade Center attacks, 70% of the first responders reported new or worsened respiratory symptoms while working at the site. Heart attacks are the leading cause of on-duty death among firefighters, accounting for about 45% of on-duty firefighter fatalities. Now, our detoxification pathways generally process the water-soluble toxins in the liver. However, synthetic chemicals and persistent organic pollutants are a recent development as of the Industrial Revolution. Our bodies have not fully adapted to being able to process these materials and unaltered lipophilic toxins become sequestered in fat. And the brain is 60 to 70 percent fat, but not all of that is adipose tissues where toxins will store. This chart represents conditions that can identify toxicity in the human body. Here we see an exploded view of a fat cell, which is to represent the triglycerides in the fat, the mitochondria, which are the powerhouses of the cells, and they produce adenosine triphosphate or ATP energy. That's the energy our body needs to do any kind of activities. So we're always producing ATP. However, when toxins invade the fat cells, they cause oxidative stress as well as they interrupt the enzymes and proteins needed for the fat to be able to produce ATP. Mitochondria, therefore, is a target of environmental toxicants. Mitochondrial dysfunction is a hallmark of environmental injury or toxicants. Here is a review of the recent literature as of 2022. Mitochondrial dysfunction is the root cause of many diseases, especially those that are non-communicable and non-genetic. Chronic fatigue syndrome, for example, is caused by mitochondrial dysfunction. Here you see a roll-up of many diseases that are known to be caused by mitochondrial dysfunction, including autism, ALS, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and diabetes. I can go on to say fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, and adrenal fatigue. Our solution, sauna detoxification using niacin, also known as detoxination. The goals of any detoxification must address lipophilic xenobiotics or substances foreign to the body, and these substances are fat attracted or fat soluble. They must liberate fat stored xenobiotics at the cellular level. They must mobilize xenobiotics to the largest detox organ of the body, that would be skin, which is about 22 square feet on the average person. They must pick up xenobiotics in the GI tract and from the bile acids. They must keep pace with the elimination of liberated toxins. Must support the liver and the kidneys. And detoxination is our answer. Detoxination is a concatenation of detoxification and decontamination. My father, Dr. David E. Root, pioneered this program for occupational medicine. He treated workplace exposure injuries, including case studies we're going to review today, like the Shreveport firefighters, the 9-11 first responders, 
Utah meth cops, and some Slovenia capacitor workers who were exposed to PCBs. It was also used for industrial accidents, including Chernobyl and Flint, Michigan water. For the military personnel, he's treated Agent Orange, Gulf War Syndrome, burn pits, and explosives exposures. It has been used for many years for drug addiction rehabilitation, including LSD, marijuana, pharmaceutical issues, and other types of drugs. So who is Dr. David E. Root? Dr. Root retired from the Air Force as a full colonel after 20 years of service. He had a unique position as being one of 10 flying physicians in the United States Air Force. He was also an astronaut trainee for the secret military space program called the Manned Orbiting Laboratory. This was a project, by the way, that never did fully take off. It got moved to NASA. However, they needed flight surgeons to go up into these tin cans to be able to spy on the Soviet Union. And in order for them to become astronauts, the doctors or flight surgeons needed to become pilots which I never could understand because they don't fly a rocket. But this put him in the unique position of being one of 10 flying positions in the United States Air Force. When the Mandoral Lab program shut down, he was moved to Beale Air Force Base where he became the flight surgeon for the SR-71 squadron. And if you don't know what the SR-71 Blackbird is, just picture anything Batman would have flown. But here is an example of the plane when we were able to go to the flight line and watch it take off and land. Now that is my father in the T-38, the chase plane. He, he was not just the flight surgeon, he was also a chase plane pilot. And there were times where the uh, landing gear may not have come down on the plane, on the SR-71 Blackbird, and so uh, he would be called out to ensure that the gear was down and locked. After that post, he was stationed in England where he became a research pilot physician. He was stationed at RAF Farnborough as part of the Institute of Aviation Medicine. In this role, he was testing biological and chemical defense systems. He's the only American doctor awarded the Queen's Commendation for Valuable Service in the Air. Uh, he was elected a fellow of the Royal Aeronautical Society, again, a unique position for a United States Air Force doctor and pilot. He was elected a fellow of the Aerospace Medical Association, as well as a fellow of the American College of Occupational and Environmental Medicine. And here's his Wikipedia bio that shows he's known for human detoxification. The SR-71 Blackbird is a unique plane in the fact that it actually leaks fuel when on the ground. And it's designed to do so because it flies at high altitude and high speed, which causes high temperatures, and the titanium plates therefore will expand and seal the plane up. As you can see in these pictures, the plane was leaking fuel as it was sitting on the ground. In fact, this quote has always been a favorite of mine. They said whenever we took an SR-71 to an air show, they always told the local maintenance and fire department people that if the aircraft is not leaking fuel, then we have a problem. The plane had just enough fuel to get to altitude where it could then meet up with the tanker and refuel. And if you'll notice, the ground crews are wearing ponchos because the plane has an exotic fuel called JP-7 and that fuel was causing all kinds of medical conditions and as the flight surgeon my father was trying to find a way to detox these fuels the solvents and the oils that the ground crews were exposed to unfortunately to this day even there's nothing in the medical literature that describes how to detox chemicals when he retired he opened a practice in Sacramento in 1981 that was both general and occupational and industrial medicine it later became Sacramento Occupational Medical Group, and this was the last location that we had in Sacramento before he retired. That first opening you saw was one of about four locations that we wound up opening over the years. At one time at our peak, we had three locations that were actually operational. Now, his index case for detoxification comes from a couple of painters who were inside of a 650,000 gallon water tank. 
the tank only had a hatch at the bottom and so there was not a whole lot of airflow and also these folks did not have any personal protective equipment so they were breathing in the fumes and getting exposed to the paint solvents as well. Now this is not the actual tower but it's a representation. So the gentlemen that came to his center were suffering from ataxia or clumsiness. They were also uh, very argumentative with their wives who really wanted to divorce them unless they got treatment. Uh, they were also not able to carry on a conversation. Their cognitive function was in decline. So they sought help after a year of this exposure. And now serendipitously at this time, my father really didn't have anything to offer them as treatment, but, they, but he received in the mail a brochure or something like this that said niacin exercise and sauna for drug addiction rehab. Now at the time he was not interested in drug addiction, so this sounded hokey to him anyway and he threw it in the trash can. And after about three passes in and out of that trash can, that word sauna had been really gnawing at him because he realized that they were actually detoxing some kind of chemical residues that were probably drug residues. So they were using sauna for that purpose. And the reason that that would have even had his attention is because in our life we've had a sauna since 1973 in our vacation home. So the sauna we grew up with was a dry sauna and uh, I've known the benefits, so has he, since 1973. Now our protocol was based on the drug addiction rehab program co uh, created by L. Ron Hubbard, but just know we have no relationship or no association with the Church of Scientology, but what L. Ron Hubbard did come up with was a very useful mechanism. And my father grabbed that brochure and he wound up contacting the folks that sent it to him. It's a company called Body Pure. Now, Body Pure met with him and gave him a four inch thick binder. This is actually the one. And it had medical literature that really did explain why their program was so successful with drug addiction rehab. In fact, uh, in their drug addiction program called Narconon, they have about a 75% success rate, whereas the conventional drug addiction rehab is only about 21% on a good day. So this program actually is able to eliminate the cravings from the fact that these drug residues are re-stimulating the dopamine receptors when they get released from fat. And I'm going to explain this a little bit better in the next few slides. So sauna detoxification using niacin involves the use of niacin, which is not used as a supplement. It is a catalyst for two separate functions or actions in the body. It does induce a massive mobilization from the fat of xenobiotics if it is dosed and timed correctly. Now, it also does produce a flush. So if you've ever had niacin and, and received a flush from that, uh, that is a secondary mechanism that used to be believed to be the main reason why the niacin was so important for this program. It turns out it was this secondary effect that is called rebound lipolysis, which I'll show you in just a few minutes. The exercise component also does help to uh, push these mobilized toxins out to the dermis layers where they can then be sweated out. Also, the exercise initiates the sweating process. And then sauna is used for approximately now 75 total minutes. However, back in the day of the Hubbard method, they would use the saunas, which were dry saunas back then, for at least four and a half to five hours a day. We have now reduced the commitment to a total of 75 minutes. So the sauna does eliminate a majority of these toxins, but it's not through your watery eccrine sweat. These toxins need to be excreted through sebaceous sweat, which I'll show what that looks like also in a minute. The last part of this is that binders are needed for the actual picking up of toxins that permeate the GI tract and also come back through the bile acids from the liver. So the liver has bile acids that are you know, picking up the toxins from the liver and they're circulating back into the GI tract. This is where the binders fit in and they're able to pick up just about any positively charged toxin. We also need to replenish the vitamins and minerals as well as the electrolytes 
and we use several different ways of uh, replenishing. One of them is called CalMag, which is a beverage that uses calcium gluconate and magnesium carbonate in order to uh, create a uh, bioavailable type of calcium and magnesium that can help with the bones as well as the muscles. So extended periods in the sauna can cause muscle and uh, you know muscle twitching or cramping. Uh, and basically the CalMag beverage is helpful for preventing that. Uh, there's also oils which are polyunsaturated cold pressed oils. Uh, they have several purposes because they are a blend of omega-369 and it's a nice blend. Uh, but there's also the vitamins and minerals that need to be replenished because we do sweat the good stuff out with the bad. This kit here was designed for the original Scientology version by the way. Uh, and it does not include the binders, but the kit makes it a lot easier for dosing as well as more convenient. And it is also about $100 less than the actual kits or the actual products if you were to buy them individually. So let's talk about the science behind detoxination. Uh, the niacin flush is produced by prostaglandin PGD2 hormones, which are inside the cell walls of the capillaries. And so what happens is when you take niacin, it opens the capillaries by relaxing the muscles of the capillary walls. This allows a lot more red blood cells to flow through and the toxins that are blood borne at that time get pushed out to the skin layers because that's where the capillaries are. So the uh, action of the flush does carry more of these blood borne xenobiotics out to the dermal regions for sweating out. And if you've never done a niacin flush, this is an example of me doing a 200 milligram dose. And I took a picture every five minutes during a 20 minute period, and this was a time lapse. As you can see, the skin starts to turn red, and uh, it's a visible representation of the red blood cells that are now flowing through to the skin layers. So this is a study that was done on women for a, it was a glucose study. It was nothing to do with our program, but the glucose study was one that was designed to increase temporarily glucose levels for what they were studying. It was made by Wing et al. back in 2000. And this study uh, we discovered in 2014, which changed the dynamics of how we do our program today. So what you're seeing here, the free fatty acid concentrations in the blood plasma over a six hour period, uh, the measurements were taken every half hour. The control group and the study group were the same group of women. Uh, they came back about two months later to do the program or to do their study. But uh, the first measurements show a pretty flat line amount of what's called lipolysis. So lipolysis is the action of the triglycerides being broken down in the fat cells into the component parts, which are glycerol and three fatty acids. Now the uh, fatty acids that are in the fat cell at the time of lipolysis are helping to fuel the mitochondria for producing ATP. The thing is, is that uh, there's a lot more of the fatty acids and glycerol than that mitochondria needs. So these uh, free fatty acids leave the fat cells and then go populate and fuel other mitochondria in cells that don't have fat. Anytime you have the free fatty acids flowing from the fat cells, you will have a release of some of the xenobiotics from those fat cells. And that is why you'll find that chelation works. Chelation is a heavy metal detox that uses some kind of chelator like EDTA or DTPA to pick up metals that are in the blood. And so anytime you're doing anything that requires ATP, which is living, I mean, you'd be dead if you weren't, then the, uh, the fat is releasing some of these toxins through what I call a siphoning effect when the free fatty acids are leaving the fat cells. So what you're seeing with the flat line really is that there's some of these toxins being liberated over the period of time they're measuring here, but not a whole lot. So if you've ever done a HIIT workout where you've done something really strenuous and you've felt headachey or nauseous, they tell you you've got a buildup of lactic acid, but in reality you've released toxins at a much higher level. 
and that's basically not being handled. The, those toxins are not being picked up by binders. They're not being sweated out in the sauna or by exercise. So you feel headache or headachey and nauseous due to the fact that these toxins are now overwhelming your body and affecting the gut and the brain and joints and muscles and things like that. So the next piece to this uh, graphic is the niacin dosing. Now notice that once niacin has been dosed, there's about a two and a half to three hour period where the uh, uh, body's ability to produce ATP or lipolysis is diminished or depressed for that period of time that niacin is metabolizing. And with a half-life of 20 to 45 minutes, it takes about five and a half half-lives for the niacin to actually wear off. And at the point that it does, then the uh, body is able to resume the regular production of ATP and, and lipolysis. However, it tends to overshoot, and that's pretty regular. The overshoot is measurable. And you can see that it's about four times normal levels of free fatty acids in what's called rebound lipolysis. And this translates to three times normal liberation of xenobiotics from fat. This is the period of time where we exploit this action and we put you into the exercise and then into sauna. Now the exercise component is about 20 to 30 minutes of low impact aerobic exercise and the sauna is in a couple of cycles. The first one is a 45 minute cycle followed by a 5 to 15 minute break and then another 30 minute sauna cycle. Now this is something you work up to. So this is not anything that we're expecting you to do for 75 minutes straight out of the gate. And again this is also an infrared sauna. And the reason for that is because the studies have shown that the uh, sweat produced by a sauna in a given hour, a dry or finished sauna, produces approximately 95 to 97 percent water and the remaining is salt. The uh, infrared saunas on the other hand in that same hour would produce 85 to 87 percent water and the remainder is everything from the sebaceous sweat the uh, uric acid, xenobiotics, both heavy metals and other toxins, and uh, other things like sulfuric acid. Let's talk about how the body does eliminate toxins through sweat. So most of these are lipophilic xenobiotics, which means they're hydrophobic. They won't be coming out through your watery eccrine sweat. So your sweat glands, as you see here in this image, the pores, are not going to be eliminating any uh, lipophilic xenobiotics. What we're trying to accomplish is what's called sebaceous sweat, which is produced by the sebum in the sebaceous, uh, sebaceous oil glands. Now, the sebaceous glands produce this sebum, which keeps the hair follicle lubricated and the hair and skin moist on the surface while providing a protective barrier. Now, once the uh, infrared sauna has uh, generated the core temperature up to a couple of degrees higher than normal, then the uh, sebum becomes melted and produces sebaceous sweat. And because it's lipid or oily based, it's how these lipophilic xenobiotics are sweated out. Now, it's important to understand that my father knew about rebound lipolysis back in the 1980s, around 1986 for that matter. This is an example of a study that he knew of that was showing rebound lipolysis occurring after about 40 to 50 minutes. Unfortunately, though, this study was on sheep. It was done with sheep, and apparently they do metabolize niacin much quicker than humans. But it made sense that the protocol took four and a half to five hours when you see that the rebound is at its peak way down the line there and then it's still coming down for hours afterwards. So the point being that sheep do metabolize the niacin differently than humans, but we had this study to work from until 2014. So now that we know that the first three hours are actually when the body's not producing any kind of ATP to you know, produce free fatty acids, the, uh, the first three hours became uh, basically a wasted period of time and we were able to reduce the Hubbard Method's time commitment from four and a half to five hours a day down to just two. So here's some case studies I wanted to present. 
This is a Semi-Slovenia study of capacitor workers. This particular uh, study was done on a woman who was exposed to PCBs. Her job was as an inspector of the capacitors that were coming off the assembly line. And what would happen is, is that uh, she would barehandedly pick these capacitors up and if they leaked PCBs, then they went into the bad bucket. If they didn't leak PCBs, they went into the good bucket. So the hands and feet, by the way, do not have sebaceous oil glands to protect the, the skin. So she was actually absorbing through her hands these PCBs. And what that led to was the fact that she became fully dysfunctional, sleeping 20 hours a day, and the remaining four hours a day were pretty useless. Uh, she also was oozing a 50 cc's amount of blue screen material from her breasts. Now, this was uh, a material that was identified, of course, as PCBs. Now, um, once she was put on the program, within five days, the discharge stopped. And uh, after about 20 to 30 days, she was able to return to work. This was a study done on 11 of the capacitor workers from the same capacitor plant. In the case of these studies, by the way, we've had to do fat biopsies and compare those with blood serum tests because there's really no accurate way to detect a body burden reduction without using fat biopsies. So they literally would take six inch biopsy needles and shove them in the rumps of these clients or patients and take a pre and post detox measurement. And they also had to send these to the university labs in order for them to isolate the PCBs and to get a body burden count. Now, uh, it's important to recognize that the study that you're seeing here, uh, it literally rocked the toxicology world because it showed that the fat biopsies or the fat content of PCBs was over 200 times greater than the blood serum tests revealed. And uh, this was something that was so shocking that it was uh, cited in 25 other studies as well as used in a allergy medical textbook. Then we have the Shreveport, Louisiana firefighters who were fire, or fighting a uh, fire in a transformer room of the University of Shreveport. Now, <clears throat> this fire um, basically caused a lot of PCB exposures to these firefighters. And so they contacted the team to uh, set up a detox program and uh, once they got started with this program, uh, the university, or excuse me, the state of Louisiana actually uh, hired a consultant to go look into this further. And the consultant came back and reported that uh, they were using a Scientology Hubbard method, and that did not look good in optics for the uh, city of Shreveport. So this particular project was shut down prematurely, but they were able to get some study data for this. But it's important to recognize too that this incident was published in the LA Times and the uh, state of California actually opened a probe or an investigation into the use of this you know, Hubbard method for occupational medicine. So my father responded with a 50 page response letter, which was then uh, used, in fact, this is the, the LA Times uh, blurb, this is just a section of the whole article, but um, this was the response letter he sent in, and it had 23 pages of cited medical literature, and from this uh, 50 page response letter, the state of California closed the probe, allowed him to continue with his work because they saw that it was actually demonstrating uh, efficacy, and after that, the state of California became his largest client. So let's talk about one of the most uh, recognized programs for first responders. This was the, uh, the New York Rescue Workers Detoxification Project, which ran from 2002 to 2007. It treated over 5,000 first responders, volunteers, and civilians, mostly who were involved with the cleanup efforts at Ground Zero. Now, uh, every time they would lift any kind of debris from the towers, there would be a new dust cloud that would be lifted into the air. And the dust clouds you know, included all kinds of uh, materials, 
Uh, briefly, let me just show that the uh, that the Heroes Health Fund was the source for funding because none of the first responders, volunteers, or civilians involved with this project had to pay to go through it. It was all donations and uh, grants. This was actually a uh, picture taken prior to moving to New York to set up two centers, and uh, this was a pilot project of some of the first responders involved with the cleanup efforts and, and they went through the program and because of their results the project was funded and so everybody shut down in Sacramento and moved to New York. So this was Sacramento Occupational Medical Group which remained open as an occupational medicine company which I was the executive director running but uh, my father was mostly flying back and forth to New York to work with these first responders. So we had some of the most unprecedented exposures of all time with the towers falling. There was all kinds of debris uh, and the clouds that rolled through the streets of Manhattan were you know, really infecting, affecting a lot of uh, people who were uh, unaware of the dangers of that dust cloud, of those dust clouds. Uh, according to James Dahlgren, who uh, was the assistant clinical professor of medicine at the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, uh, the toxic dust, fume, and vapor that arose from the collapsing World Trade Center and subsequent fire contained hundreds of different toxic chemicals, including dioxins, PCBs, asbestos, silica, benzene, polybrominated diphenyl ethers, manganese, chromium, lead, mercury, nickel, oxides of nitrogen, and sulfur. So this was quite the toxic cocktail. The standard of care for these first responders, volunteers, and civilians included inhalers, steroids, acid reflux medications, and antidepressants. The goal of the treatment was to suppress the symptoms because time will heal. The project goals were to get the rescue workers returned to their pre-9-11 quality of life, and also retained in the workforce and not forced into early retirement and prevention of long-term effects of resulting from body burdens of toxic chemicals. So over 5,000 rescue workers were contaminated and treated through the 2002 to 2007 time frame. And here's an example of one of many towels that we would see. Actually, there's two separate towels there, by the way, but uh, here's an example of towels that were stained purple from sweat and in the case of these towels the purplish color is actually manganese which was found to be morbidly high uh, from the steel construction please pause this video if you'd like to read the uh, case studies of the next four slides So the study that was published included 484 of the uh, men and women that were involved. You can see the breakdown of the different positions they had. In this graphic you'll see in the red their pre-detox symptom survey scores and in the blue of course is the post-detox. Thirty percent of all the patients had abnormal levels of thyroid related hormones at the start of the treatment and following the treatment sixty six percent of these patients had normal thyroid function. Cholesterol levels improved while on the program. As you can see in this illustration that there was less need for medication after their detox. and the improved quality of life is remarkable. In 2007 this study was published based on the project. It even showed up in Fire Engineering magazine under HealthBeat. Anne-Marie Principe is a woman who was a business owner 
that stepped out literally into the cloud as it was rolling down the street of Manhattan. She was so overwhelmed that her lungs filled up immediately and they were reduced to only one lung having 20% actual volume available. Uh, she went to her doctor and the doctor told her to go home and take care of her affairs because she was not going to make it. She then heard about the detox project uh, from a friend and uh, she went to the center and initially they turned her away because they didn't feel that uh, their insurance would be able to uh, handle the fact that uh, she was you know, basically uh, facing a death sentence. But she met up with my father and uh, begged him to basically help her and he did take her under his wing. And now you can see the after image there at 60 years old. She looks so much better. Her story was so interesting to Dr. Daniel Amen that he had us on his Brain Warrior's Way podcast with his wife, Tana. That you can find on our website. The next project was the Utah Meth Cops Project. Now, this one was uh, related to the fact that these police officers were getting doused with chemicals uh, through the busts of these meth labs and coming down with all kinds of diseases because they were actually contaminated by the melees that uh, you know was were, were happening when people were throwing the chemicals at the police to try to get away so these uh, these police officers were coming down with diseases that were caused by those chemicals in fact we did see some deaths so some of the common symptoms that were seen include the following And the project was funded in 2007 by Mark Sherliff, who was the then Utah Attorney General. And uh, he had called um, for our team to consult with the uh, Utah uh, medical folks there. So there were 68 police officers who were put through the program. And they were on average 30 to 35 days. And the average reduction in symptom scores was 72%. So this was a study also that uh, you can find at PubMed. Here's a New York meth cop that came to my center. Uh, he spent about 30 days uh, going through his treatment. And as you can see, this is a towel that we, we uh, nicknamed the tie-dye towels because uh, he was producing either tan, bluish purple, or tie-dye towels like this one. And what we did uh, with that bluish purple was we discovered that it was actually sodium hydroxide, or the main ingredient in Drano. And these are some other studies that you can also find. And in fact, if you go to our website at getdetoxinated.com forward slash studies, you'll be able to find these uh, study links. Now, testing of the body burdens is actually only able to be done by fat. The urine and stool samples, for example, are only going to show what the body is eliminating. Uh, the blood is only going to show what's in the blood at the time when the, the sample was taken. <clears throat> and if you recall, the ATP production is how uh, the you know, free fatty acids release the toxins back into blood circulation. So uh, that's not going to be an accurate body burden uh, amount, so not useful for pre- and post-detox. Hair samples can be contaminated, and we've never trusted any of the HTMA uh, hair testing. And, but uh, I was looking into bioresonance devices to see if they had any kind of ability to uh, tell a pre and post detox. All they can really do, though, is show what the, uh, the body burden contains as far as heavy metals and some chemicals. So fat, bi fat biopsies were the only way we were able to do a pre and post detox for studies. Now, there's one other interesting fact here is that detoxination is resetting the metabolism and uh, allowing the body to actually deal with xenobiotics in a much better way even after a program ends. So here's a study on several chemicals that were uh, shown to uh, continue to be reduced even after the uh, average of 20 days on this particular study. So they did a pre-study uh, sample and then after about 20 days, they did samples again. And then four months later, they came back and they could see that the body burden reductions were still occurring 
Now, that dieldrin up there at the very top was uh, one of the most toxic materials we've ever seen. And in fact, even though it's been banned for decades, it still shows up in people's bodies just like DDT or DDE, which is a metabolite. So a summary of the sauna detoxification program is that it is a holistic program and not evasive. Uh, even though we used it in a clinical setting for over 30 years, it was actually so holistic that it can be done by anybody. Now, thousands of occupational and environmental exposure cases were successfully treated worldwide while we were doing this in a clinical setting. And there's a 30-year history of peer-reviewed published research that continues to the present. The State of California Medical Board did approve this for occupational medicine in 1987. And I re rolled this out to the public in 2017 and published my book in uh, 2019. Uh, my book is on detoxification using niacin following the recommended protocol of Dr. David E. Root. If you can see it, it's right here, but the uh, actual graphic will be coming up. And the best part is, is that there are improved outcomes in less time. So about me, I've been married to my wife Susie for 33 years. I'm the adoptive father of three beautiful biological sisters. I became a board member of Sierra for Forever Families uh, for six years. Uh, I've been an IT entrepreneur for 35 years. I am now the CEO of Saberhawk LLC in Rancho Cordova. I hosted a uh, radio show called the Get Detoxinated Show uh, for about a year, and that was on 105.5 FM. Uh, I am the co-developer of Detoxination. I am a senior detoxination and trainer or instructor of the protocol. And uh, as I've already mentioned, I was the author of Sauna Detoxification Using Niacin. This is the book and you can find it on Amazon. I also run a Facebook group called Detox I Nation, but you can find it by looking up the name of the book, Sauna Detoxification Using Niacin. So how can I serve you? I do consulting, and that includes program implementation, acquisitions of sauna. So I'm one of two experts that uh, are the most knowledgeable about infrared and, and dry saunas. And I can help you to make the right selection based on your uh, size requirements, your budget, power requirements, you know, number of people you need to seat, uh, the you know, wood types, things like that. So uh, I am very knowledgeable and experienced in saunas. I also do general uh, detox consulting. I also am a trainer, so um, I train in the detoxination program, and I'm also certifying detoxinations with my program. So we do have a detoxination certificate training program that uh, allows others to do what I do, because when I deal with uh, people that have varying different conditions, you have to be able to know how to tailor the protocol to better serve their needs. I do remote detox coaching as well, so I have uh, at this point in time over 230 clients around the world that are actively going through the program that I'm working with. So this is a very comprehensive one-on-one -on -one support. And also I have a $75 retainer that uh, allows you to um, have questions answered uh, it's charged by the quarter hour, uh, so it's uh, another way I can help you. There is a simpler way, though, that people can do this program because I do know that first responders are not going to be able to sit for a 30-day program that takes two hours out of, out of their day. That's just something I know that uh, first responders are not going to be able to commit to. So we have something that is even simpler, but it allows you to get the... Uh, the toxins out faster than normal by using sauna but you do it while flushing so the niacin flush will be pumping those uh, toxins that are in the blood at that time out to the dermal region so that you can sauna and get those sweated out there's no time commitment it can be done anytime you want to sauna the instructions are downloadable I do have uh, a link in the description of this video where you can download those and it does exploit the niacin flush because, like I've said, there is always value to the flush. It's just that that's not the main mechanism for this protocol. It is more practical for active first responders, already mentioned. And this only takes about 30 to 60 minutes per day, and it's whenever you like. Now, if you've been interested in what the logo of our uh, company is about, it is in honor of my father. Uh, he flew the F-100 Super Sabre, which makes up the Sabre, you know, the uh, curve in the back of the head of the Sabre Hawk. Uh, he flew the RAF Hawker Hunter, which is where the Hawk comes from. 
And then as you can see, the T38 talon, those talons are uh, wrapped around the necks of the caduceus. And the uh, wings are actually the chemtrails, uh, which do exist. And uh, I actually uh, have done a documentary on those. And they are dropping aluminum oxide, barium oxide, strontium, and some other things that uh, may even be biological waste. But uh, we're being poisoned from the air too. Anyway, uh, the blue is the uh, United States Air Force blue or military blue. So that's the, uh, the symbolism behind our logo. So thank you. I know you can't ask me questions, but I really appreciate your time. And uh, please do reach out to me. You can schedule to uh, meet with me. I have a booking system at heal.me forward slash detox. Heal.me forward slash detox. Again, thank you for your time.